All right, so 30 year old radio just got Bluetooth installed. Everything's fine. However, the encoder really is not playing along, right? So you can see I'm scrolling one click to the right and a lot of the clicks are ignored a lot of the clicks are duplicated or even quadrupled it's a pain in the ass right so you can see there are serious problems here All right so what can you do about this all right so first things First things first, unplug your radio, although I would uh, correctly assume yours is not plugged in. What you want to do is pop the top cover off. This is just um, held in, so just a flathead screwdriver and it will just pop off. Um, right, there's two screws, left and right. I actually did do a video on this a while ago. So one left, one right. Let's see how well this goes single-handed. Thought I'd leave the window open, get some rain sounds in, add more of an ominous vibe to this. And there's another one on the back which you'll want to just un uh, untighten, right? Just a few turns, say five or ten. And at this point, I will leave you guys on the bench and um, right, just press in an outward motion and and press the, the front cover up right because there's clips on the back and on the side so we just want to lift it up and you saw that uh, came loose of course yours will never come loose this quick because it's just a scripted tutorial right shit never goes as well as they uh, as they make it out to be but it shouldn't be too hard right Becker engineered these pretty well then you'll have two or three uh, screws on the back, right? Some radios have, uh, some models have two screws, but most have three. So these are all T7s, I think, or T8. Let's see. So these are T8. I don't know if it's visible. I'm shooting this in 4K, it should be. Um, all right, so get all the screws out. And at this point, you'll want to grab this, um, this little earthing lug and press both clips again outward in an outward motion. So this is pretty tricky, but it's it's quite doable. And then the whole thing, right? There's some more clips on the sides, but the whole thing should eventually release. Oh. You also have to take off the knob. Again, be careful. These are pretty fragile on the underside, this transparent piece. Uh, springs falling off on mine, so that's also not super great. Let me see if I can. Um, next up, you'll want to unclip this piece, or not. Doesn't really matter, but do note that this unclips very easily. And at this point, my PCB is falling out, so that's fine. All right, and now, basically why we're all here. So this encoder, I actually started doing this one and decided that uh, it would be a good candidate for a tutorial. So you can see this top part is held in. Like changing them is, is a pain in the ass because there's a lot of thermal mass and you cannot heat these up massively with an iron because uh, this indent the piece that does the the indentations is 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 also plastic and the back end is plastic and it will melt it's not a good idea so i would even recommend if you have to swap one i would recommend cutting the leads and finding a right a least stressful way of uh, thermally uncoupling them and then just take a very stiff and very pointy flathead screwdriver and again the the risk of impaling yourself here is is 1.02 i did run the math and so you will see me so so far i have not impaled myself but uh, it is going to happen with a probability of 102 percent especially if i'm on video i mean come on 
is asking for it on numerous levels. So let me see if I can. So we're fully zoomed in, uh, in, and I'll do one pin whilst looking at the camera to make sure you guys can see this. And in the rest, I'll do looking at the actual radio. All right, so you can see this is the kind of motion we're looking for. And so that's one side done, and the other side is a pain in the ass because there's a stupid connector here. But we'll see how we handle. I'm even planning on uh, ripping this one out if uh, push comes to shove. But let's see, maybe we can uh, maybe we can avoid that. So now this should come free. Let's uh, and the engines be very, very, very careful when you're prizing into this, not to press too hard down because you will damage. There's a plastic disc with a uh, conductive layer printed onto it or deposited onto it, if you will. But um, you really have to be careful with that. I. Uh, I did almost fuck up one encoder like that, so that's uh, something something to be very concerned about. All right, so this one's uh, giving in pretty pretty easily. I'm not putting up too much of a fight, and I'll uh, show you guys what the problem is once we get inside. So. I'll just force this one loose. All right, boom. So, what do we have here? We're fully zoomed in, and this is basically the top assembly with the clicker. Um, for those of you playing The Last of Us 2, no, not that kind. And, um,. Why does it not click? So this has to be pressed in a bit lower. And it does click, right? And the problem is if you do heat this up too much, then it will get damaged. So this does have a thermal, um, no thermal, has um, conductive grease. So I wouldn't really advise mm, scrubbing it off, right? I just, all right, an alarm rang. So again, I, um, as I was saying, I would recommend leaving the layer of uh, conductive grease on. We can see that the contacts themselves are fine, right? So what actually does cause this, and this is my hypothesis, I don't know for sure, but it does seem pretty legitimate, is with time, these wipers, first of all, they do get a bit oxidated, so I will see if I can get more light on this. So I will be wiping these, right? You can see they look pretty bad. But mainly what I will do is lift them up, right? So just uh, give them a little boost. Ever so slightly, right? You don't want to overdo anything in life. Oh well, yeah, just get under there. Slight nudge. I think that even should do it. Maybe a bit more. I mean, you shouldn't overdo it. But we all know. I mean, we are all gonna overdo it. All right, and if you snap one of these, you basically have to kill yourself. There's literally no other way around it. I think you could do jail time for saying shit like that. was this case in the US this chick made this guy kill himself pretty rough and he must have also fucked up an encoder because otherwise I don't see it happening anyways they're roughly the same right they're gonna get pressed down anyways so I don't have to really be 
at the same level. I have no idea what I can wipe them with, so let me just uh, think. A piece of paper comes to mind, so let's see how that does. I don't know, I, I really don't want to put like cloth and crap like that in there. So... That's kind of action. Did it do anything? I think so. Hmm. Ever so slightly. And I don't know. Just lift them up one more time because I'm an idiot. Alright, so they're like fairly lifted up, just for reference. Alright, so I think we're ready to press this back in. Okay, not sure if this has a, a direction, but I'll just put the... Um, I think it came out this way, with the clicker on the outer side, so... Yeah, I'm, uh, I have to look away from the viewfinder a bit because this is quite fiddly, so I'll, um, you know what, I think I'll uh, squeeze, I think I'll squeeze the pins, the locating pins right now, just to have that go in a bit more easily. that although I think this is too much to be perfectly honest because I also have to be able to separate them later okay so once the pins are bent straight again whilst being very careful because they are extremely brittle you can go ahead and uh, pop this back in Okay, so maybe it is supposed to go in the other way, let's see. Usually I'd use a bigger hammer, but uh, this is not my radio, so I'll, uh, I'll be careful for now. Okay, so the clicker part, uh, at least on the BE2210, is located on this side, otherwise it doesn't click in. And what I'll want to do now is uh, get a bigger screwdriver and somehow wedge myself in there. Let's see. All right, so my phone literally died every 10 seconds while filming 4K60. This is super disastrous. And uh, I still don't know how to exactly get these done. I mean, technically, you don't really have to separate them as, as wide as they were at the factory. But I think it would help, to be honest. So, I'll give it my best. Yeah, so unfortunately this tool seems to work pretty well. And so you guys just have to um, go over to your local dentist and uh, steal one of these because it has been instrumental in this entire operation. 
All right. And yeah, so next time these do break, you will have to buy another encoder. Because um, these clips are for sure not uh, not taking another full bend unbend cycle. Also worth noting, right? So just be sure not to uh, bend these too much. They do not like it. All right. So it still clicks. And now let's see if. Um, if it runs so and again I don't recommend um, I mean this is pretty obvious but do not populate this without the plastic because it might short onto the case so let's see and again Becker did a super good job oh uh, very often this plastic piece will fall out damn it this plastic piece will fall out no need to worry right just just look at the orientation here and you just slide this right back in uh, lift the door a tiny bit and then it will slot in here the door will come on top and that's super fine all right you do get extra elegance points if uh, yours does not fall out though so keep that in mind <laughs> Make sure to line up everything. See if the the little lever can can open the door, which it can. Two, one, boom. It's pretty bad, actually. Let's see if it keeps doing it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Still not perfect, which kind of bothers me, to be honest. But you do have a lot more control, so it skips some and duplicates some. But not to the extent it was doing it before, right? And it might be just a thing that uh, these need to sit in a tiny bit. Who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. Where am I? I think I am. 